A group offers a sense of protection. It is easier to exist in a group than in solitude. Solidarity is a tremendous strength. Indoctrination erases the self and facilitates the willingness to imitate people within the group and judge those outside of it. It reduces the individual's fear of being an outcast. Group belonging gives a set of values validated by many. It suppresses individual doubts by adopting a collective self. It gives the individual a sense of purpose. It provides atmospheres that solitude cannot enjoy and diverts worries. As Karl Marx said, religion is the opium of the people. It makes us feel assimilated. I think many multiracial people can relate to my story. My mom is Scandinavian American, my dad was Filipino. Back in the 80s, these two lovely people created me. Aw, look how cute I was. My dad passed away when I was young and we moved to California. Throughout my childhood, we were estranged from both sides of the family. Even though I've tried very hard to assimilate over the last few decades, it has never happened. As my sister puts it, we're too white for the browns and too brown for the whites. Although part of me wishes assimilation were possible, I now see the benefits of non-assimilation. I'm able to make personal decisions that would be questioned and frowned upon, such as getting divorced or even attending Harvard. On one hand, I long for that deep connection and sense of belonging within my family groups. However, the non-assimilation into these groups has allowed me to foster a strong sense of self and create the life I want with very little pressure to conform to group norms. I moved to America from Hungary at the age of three. I had a Hungarian influence at home and learned the American way of life in school. Two different worlds shaping my identity from an early age. Over the years, I noticed I looked different, spoke differently, and saw things in an alternative way than my peers. I didn't fit in fully with my American friends, and I had an accent when I spoke Hungarian with my relatives. What side did I belong on? In my late 20s, I moved to Norway for love to start a new life. I didn't consider how grand the implications of a new culture, geography, and general outlook on reality would have on my life. Little did I know I would have to ask the same identity question again. This time, the stakes are a lot higher, assimilation and learning a new language is much harder, and there's internal pushback on being like everyone else. I had an identity crisis six months into living in Norway. I didn't have anyone to mirror the characteristics of my identity. I didn't feel accepted, but I realized I had to be true to who I was even though I was in a new world. I had to accept myself from within and override the negative emotions that were festering. Assimilation confers many privileges, as well as a feeling of belonging. For decades, immigrant groups have chased the security of that American dream, but assimilation comes at a cost. As we assimilate, we risk losing both the unique things about our parent cultures and our certainty of our own identities. Our identities become diluted. When my ancestors came to America, they were poor and socially undesirable. Over the years, they adapted to the culture of their new country. They learned English and left behind old traditions because they believed that would lead to a better life. They were right. Where we were once unwanted outsiders, we've now become part of the American cultural landscape. The traditions we've kept celebrate the sacrifices that have granted us endless opportunity. I'm grateful to live in the better future my ancestors sought for their descendants, but I also feel a sense of loss for the culture and community I might have had.